try to preach. want you to take your Bibles this morning, please, and turn in the Gospel of John to chapter 17, fourth book of your New Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, John. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 17, please. We may have had some lost people in the service Wednesday night. I preached a message primarily to the Christian people. We may have some, we may not have any lost people in the church service this morning, but the message is about the lost condition of people. However, I believe that Anytime we preach the Word of God, if you're saved, you ought to be able to get some benefit from it. And so I hope that you'll enjoy the message. Don't take the title of the message to insinuate that the preacher thinks you're lost. I don't know if you're saved or lost. But uh, I hope that the message will somehow be a blessing to each one who's here today. Now if you have it, John 17, would you stand please? In reverence for the reading of the Word of God. John chapter 17. Some people say that this is the true Lord's Prayer. They say that the prayer the Lord taught His disciples was a disciple's prayer. I won't argue with anybody over, over such things, but this is, um, this is a special prayer of the Bible in that it is uh, the prayer of the Savior. And there's a sense in which in this prayer, uh, the Lord Jesus prayed for you and me. I'm thankful for that. We're probably not going to get that far. We're going to begin at verse 1, though where the Bible says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify Thy Son, that Thy Son also may glorify Thee. As Thou hast given Him power over all flesh, that He should give eternal life to as many as Thou hast given Him. And this is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. I have glorified Thee on the earth, I have finished the work which Thou gavest me to do. And O Father, glorify Thou me with Thine own self, with the glory which I had with Thee before the world was. I have manifested Thy name unto the men which Thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and Thou gavest to me, and they have kept Thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever Thou hast given me are of Thee, for I have given unto them the words which Thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. And of course, he's preaching prophetically. But these are, are praying prophetically. But these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father... Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Our text verse is verse 12. Whilst, or while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. May we pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that the supernatural power of God would take this book and make this service for each one a holy communion service where God and men get in contact with each other. May the Holy Spirit of God do that work that you said He would do, so that if there's anyone here who is unsaved, they might be reproved of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and that the Lord Jesus might be revealed unto them, that in their lost condition they might believe on the Son of God unto life eternal. Bless your children. May we be grateful, more grateful than ever, that when once we were lost, now we're found. May we live as saved people, as found people. And may we go out into the fields here in Jacksonville 
with a burden for those who are lost. May we give, Lord, uh, with our church, uh, dispensing to missions and praying for missionaries that lost people across the world might be saved. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Be seated. This morning I want to bring a message to you from the Bible on the one word in John chapter 17, verse 12, just after the halfway mark in the verse, the word lost. Lost. Do you know that there's almost no way that the word lost is a wonderful word? It's a negative word. The word lost is a sad word. Have you ever lost anything? It wasn't a positive moment. Um, yeah. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm teasing. I did lose something yesterday. Like a fellow said, though, about that lost train of thought. The guy talking about as he got old, he, he hated it about his hearing and his sight and his uh, aches and his joints, but he really did miss losing his mind. Yeah. And... Uh, in the Bible, in Luke chapter 15, we find examples of lost things. The first parable was about a lost sheep. The second was about a, about a piece of lost silver. And the third one was about a lost son. Some of you are acquainted with that passage, and you remember the three stories Jesus gave there. And then when you go into Luke 16, there's another one lost that that is separate, and that was a lost soul. The rich man was lost. The Bible uses the word lost in 32 verses. And in nearly every case that the word is used in Scripture, it's a reference to the nation of Israel uh, called lost, lost sheep. The word lost can refer to the state and condition of unsaved people in general. In other words, there's just two types of people in this world. Saved and lost. Right. In a practical sense, you can even use the word to many Christians who would make a practical illustration of the prodigal son's story who was a son who got lost. And Christian people can get lost. You can't lose your soul if you're saved. You don't lose your salvation if you're saved. And in that case, a saved person can never be lost. But in the sense of wandering away from where you ought to be as a Christian, sometimes Christian people get off track. Like somebody asked Daniel Boone and asked him if he'd ever been lost. He said, no, I've never been lost, but I will admit to have been confused for several weeks. Yeah. And many Christians uh, lose their way. I want to bring a message this morning primarily, though, to apply to people who've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. They may be like Daniel Boone. They don't want to admit that they're lost. They want to just say that they're just planning on getting things right one day. Yeah. My friend, if you're lost, you're lost. That's right. And if you die in a lost condition, there's no hope. There's no purgatory. There's no way somebody's going to pray you out of anywhere. You are lost. And it's good for you to be able to admit it. Because if you admit it, you can get saved. You'll never get saved until you first admit you're lost. You Christian people, you bear with me and ask God to give you what He wants you to get out of this message. Please don't misunderstand or misrepresent your pastor. I am not trying to convince all of our church that you all have made false professions and that I'm trying to get you saved. But if you have made a false profession, you're lost. That's right. Okay? And saved people ought to rejoice in what the Bible says about anything. And I hope that you can get a blessing from the message that I'm going to title this morning, What It Means to Be Lost. What It Means to Be Lost. I wrote a little track many years ago called You May Be Religious, But Are You Saved? And so for any of you that don't know that you're saved, that's my question to you. It's not 
uh, do you believe in God? It's not do you believe in a supreme being. I'm asking you, are you saved? I'm not asking you if you do good to your fellow man. I'm not asking you if you're a hypocrite like Jimmy Swaggart or any of those other people that have got caught in things and, and embarrassed. I'm asking you, are you saved? Yeah. And if you're not saved, you're <laughs> lost. Yeah. Now the term, even though that as I've told you in this introduction, applies in the Bible primarily to Israel, it can apply to anyone. Jew or Gentile who's never trusted Christ and His atoning work for salvation. And the word lost is a good word. Yeah. Right. I, uh, I'd encourage us to use the word. We all use it. Somebody lost their phone here not too long ago. Right. Thank God somebody found it. And, uh, and so we're not talking about a term. You know, a lot of people say, well, you can't witness using terms that people aren't acquainted with. They're trying to get us not to use the words saved and born again and things like that. But you know, everybody knows the word lost. I want to use some of the uh, ideas that the word lost brings to mind to try to show you some scriptural truth. Number one, the word lost can mean disappear. That means you can't find it. it nowhere, it's nowhere around. Do you know you can lose an opportunity? It's not around anymore. That's right. You can lose your ink pen. It's not around anymore. Some of you have lost things and you just thought you misplaced them, but they have disappeared. Yeah. Amen? My wife gave me, I think she put $100 one time in my hands. And uh, it was one of those times where I was trying to save and redeem the time. I had her drive. And I was reading. And she gave me, I think, $520 bill. And I stuck them somewhere. Never to be found. Never to be found. Yeah. Wow. They're lost. Yeah. Okay, they're still lost. Ms. O'Neill may know where they are. As far as I'm concerned, they're lost. <laughs> you can lose a pocketbook, dear ladies. You can lose a checkbook. I remember that there was a time when God was getting ready to put a man over Israel in his permissive will as a king. And they sought out a man named Saul. And the Bible says the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee and arise and go seek the asses in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3. And you realize that there are a lot of things in our lives that are going to disappear. When you think about the word lost, do you understand that your possessions are going to not stay around forever? You can look at them at your house. If you're unsaved, listen to me, everything that you enjoy and take security in that gives you some comfort is going to be gone. I don't care what it is. If you, you, uh, you, you keep that car up, you clean it, you detail it, one of these days, you're not going to have that car anymore. One of these days, you're not going to have that house to live in anymore. All your possessions are going to be left. Somebody says, how much did that man leave behind when he died? Every bit of it. That's what you leave when, when you die. You leave every bit of it. i tell you something else you'll lose. Not only your possessions, but your physical health is going to one day disappear. You can't guarantee that you're going to be living to be 70, 80, 90, 100. You can't guarantee that. Your health could disappear at any time. The man uh, that, that we were talking about as a member of our church and passed away, uh, I don't think he was 70. He was in his 60s. Not everybody lives to be 70. Not everybody lives to be 50. Not everybody lives to be 30. And one of these days, not only is your, uh, your possessions are going to disappear, but your physical health is going to just now it may be that it's going to go slowly, like some people who have died slowly through cancer. It may be that it's sudden, as through a, an automobile accident or heart attack. Sometimes take people of various ages. Amen. Amen. Children have heart attacks. Adults have heart attacks. Old people have heart attacks. And when it happens, it's suddenly, and then everything that you had is gone, and your physical health is gone as well. And what's sad about that is when those things are gone, your possibilities for doing anything in the future are gone. They're gone. You had better 
do what you're going to do while you have the ability to do it. Because there's coming a time when all of your possibilities will be lost. And so when we think about the word lost, I want you to think about it that way. Is because it means that some things are going to disappear. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you won't have an opportunity to know God and see God and be able to spend eternity in bliss with God Almighty. You'll spend eternity uh, with God-haters. You'll spend eternity with wicked people. You'll spend... Listen, if you've got relatives that are saved and, uh, and you're not saved, you better get saved. Amen. And you ought to get saved for a number of reasons, but I won't tell you, you're going to lose the opportunity to ever see your loved ones again. That's right. right. One of the comforts we Christians have, somebody... Uh, since I've been here, Brother T.D. passed away, Brother Jack passed away. And one of the comforts I have about uh, seeing them leave and, and about going to the funeral is I know I'm going to see them again one day. Amen. Amen. But, if you're, but if you're lost, that's an opportunity that has disappeared when you die without Jesus Christ. Number one is it can mean disappeared. Another thing the word lost can mean is to be disobedient. Like a lost sheep. That is, you wander in the wrong direction. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, 176, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. And dearly beloved, that can be uh, simply where God tells you to do something and you don't do it. I was telling our folks in our Sunday school class this morning that sin can be uh, defined that easily. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. That basically is sin in a nutshell. A lost sheep in the sense that God is leading you and telling you to do one thing. He gives you a commandment to do something and you say, I'm not going to do it. Or God gives you another commandment from a negative aspect as many of the commandments are in the Bible, and he says, you're not to do something. You go ahead and do it. That's what sin is. Sin is uh, nothing more than God wanting you to do something or not wanting you to do something, and your will goes exactly the opposite way. It's rebellion. It's a clenched fist in God's face saying, you're not making me. And that's what sin is. You've seen it in children. And they may not be able to resist you physically, but deep down inside, they're saying, we'll see about that. All that is is the sin of a lost person. Everybody is sometime or other in your life disobedient. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You good people have sinned. Amen. That may not sound very flattering, but you good people... Without God are wicked. Amen. Without God, there's nothing in you and me that is good whatsoever. Right. You say, preacher, how are you going to build a church by getting people to come and then telling them they're wicked and they're no good? <laughs> well, the good thing about it is God didn't tell me to build this church. I'm just preaching the word. He said he built it. And he'll build it, he'll, he will build it through us. I tell you how he'll build it. He'll build it through us telling people the truth. That's the right. The truth is, God's good and you're bad. Amen. By nature. And if God gets in you, you can become a good man. That's right. I can show you that from Scripture. If God gets in you, you can be a good man. But only because somebody moved in and motivated you and empowered you and directed you to do good. Don't even trust yourself. And this is the power of negative thinking. <laughs> even after you get saved, don't trust yourself. Because without Him, you're nothing. Right. Even after you get saved, don't trust yourself. Don't trust the brethren. Don't trust the sister. <laughs> don't trust anybody. Not ultimately, not completely. I'm not saying to be paranoid. I'm just saying, trust God alone. Amen. I'm very happy. My truck don't even run. I'm happy. I'm going to suddenly be, be happy to try not be right. I'm very happy. You know why I'm very happy? Because I'm positive toward God. I can trust Him. I, if I focus on Him, think on Him, then I can, I can stay happy. God can give me so many more blessings. 
uh, than I deserve on a daily basis and, and uh, where I just don't have to worry about all the stuff I'm trying to plan to work it out to make me happy. The word loss can mean disobedient. Number three, the word loss can mean to be deserted. To be deserted. I mean left behind. I'm talking about uh, all by themselves. I'm telling you, there is possible. You know, we say somebody's lost at sea. Well, they actually, maybe they may know where they are. But nobody has been able to locate them. They may be on a deserted island. But they're lost. Uh, lost. We talk about lost POWs. Maybe somebody knows where they are, but uh, the people that like to, to find them the most can't find out where they are. And when you're, when you're out in that situation and you are deserted and there's no one coming to your aid, then it's an awful experience. That's what it means to be lost. That's like being without hope. The Bible says, Now when she saw that she had waited and her hope was lost. In Ezekiel chapter 19, verse 5, Then she took another of her wealth and made him a young lion. The Bible says in Ezekiel 37, 11, Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. I'm so glad that I don't have that hopelessness in my life. I'm so glad that though all people forsake us, we're never alone. Because God said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's Isn't right. it a blessing to no longer be lost? Amen. Isn't it a blessing to be able to sing Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. I was blind, but now I see. Amen. You'll be alone in your depression if you're lost. If you're unsaved, it must be an awful thing to be down emotionally and have nobody inside that divine comfort of the Holy Ghost to tell you, it's going to be all right. I'm going to stay with you all the way through this. must be awful to be alone in your disease. To be alone in your depravity. To be alone in your disappointments. To be alone in your debt. And then finally, as you near the grave, to be alone in your death. must be a terrible thing because you'll be deserted. Another thing the word lost can mean, it can mean deceived. The Bible says in Jeremiah 56, my people have been lost sheep or have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. In other words, somebody told them something that was not the truth. And lost can mean deceived. People out here, when you think about them, they're lost. Some of them think that they know what they're doing. But they've been deceived. Lost people are deceived about their condition. They're deceived about the course they're on. They're deceived about the crisis they're in. They think that God is going to give them an opportunity when they want to get saved, to get saved. That's deception. That's not guaranteed. God may be merciful to you as an individual, but I'm telling you the rule is this. You don't come to God on your terms. You come to God on God's terms. That's right. And if God don't show you something by the Holy Ghost, you won't find your way to Him. Amen. God does the drawing. God does the revealing of Jesus Christ. Whosoever will, let Him come. And you better come when the Lord is calling you. You'll say, well, when I get ready, I'll know it's the time. You know what will happen? You'll die before that happens. The word lost. The word lost can be, another meaning for it is to be disoriented. Like Daniel Boone. A lost traveler, a lost camp. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. In 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4. Unsaved people cannot see. That's why that they wander around. That's a, they cannot see it. They'd listen to you. And if they were to tell you the truth from their mouth, they'd say, I just don't see it that way. You know why you don't see it that way? Because you're blinded. 
You're blinded by Satan. You say, preacher, I just don't see. Your, I don't see God as being the kind of God you portray. I think if he's, I think he's, a, if he's God, he's got to be a nice God. And he's got to honor a fella who hasn't ever killed anybody and has to, listen, I'll tell you, God's nicer than you think he is. God is holy. And God uh, is not going to let somebody come into heaven whose heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And that, my friend, is you. Amen. You say, well, preacher, you don't know me. You don't know how much money I give to the Red Cross, to the Shrine. You don't know how much uh, work that I put in in charitable things. I don't care. I don't know that much about you, but I tell you what. Your heart is deceitful. That's right. Your heart is desperately wicked. As a matter of fact, I don't want to get too close to you if you were to allow everything just to come out that's in your depraved heart in your lifetime. Amen. 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 You say, preacher, that's not flattering. It's not. <laughs> Nobody's going to get saved by getting flattered into heaven. <laughs> Nicodemus came up to Jesus and he said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God, for no man can do the miracles which thou doest except God be with him. And you know, some people would think that the Lord Jesus would respond by saying, well, Nicodemus, you're a pretty good guy yourself. You know, you must have great discernment to say that. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus went right on the offensive and insulted him. One time after another. He said, he said marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Another place in the chapter, he said, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? In other words, he's saying, What you been reading? Where's your Bible? You don't know your Bible? And the Lord Jesus Christ did not try to flatter him. He said, You are blind. He said to the religious leaders of the day, You're blind guys. You're fools and blind. Did you know what we find out about Nicodemus? Nicodemus responded in a positive way. And from what we read in our Bibles, it's very possible that Nicodemus came to know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as anyone could at his time unto salvation. And I thank God for the examples of the Word of God in dealing with people. The word lost can be disoriented. Nicodemus didn't have a clue as to where he really was or what he was doing. And there's a lot of people that are lost like that. Give me a couple of other thoughts and we'll quit. But the word lost can mean defeated. As in a lost game. A lost contest. A lost battle. You know, unsaved people are defeated. God told a man, number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost. In 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 25. When you think about lost people, you save people to go on visitation. If you ever get going door to door... Try not to be so intimidated and worried because the people out there in our communities, they're lost. They're lost. They're not going to hurt you, not unless you jump over their fence where they got a bulldog. They're not going to, and I'm not going to. They're, they're not going to hurt you, by and large. And you guys understand, they're lost. They're in trouble, and you're the one who has the answer. These poor people are lost in the sense that many of them are miserable and defeated. And by the way, if you can find one that realizes that, that's the opportunity that you have to give the gospel to somebody and get them saved. Amen. I'm going to try to do my best to not embarrass them forever. Amen. But this couple right here, and I'm not going to get into their personal lives. I don't know all their personal lives. But from what they have told me, I guarantee you, one of the things that helped them get to a point where they were willing to hear from God was getting to a point where they realized that they didn't have what they needed. Yep. Right. They got to a point where they, where they realized... We